Laszlo and Zara gave us the address of an old power station south of town. In some ways, it was like our own field tests. In other ways, it was a whole new ball game. The only instructions we had were to come equipped, whatever that meant, and to pay close attention to the red lines. I made sure Finn had a full set of minicams charged up. Emily packed some stuff that I'd never seen before. Lou suggested he take the Orville's chopper and a few other things with him. Each tracker had a different start point in the building. Um, Loost was up first. Yeah, I'm ready. When he saw what his mission was, he knew they must have been watching him closely. It was the sketchiest stunt course any of us had ever seen. When he landed, he saw what looked like a really basic dexterity course with cones. That didn't seem right, and so he pulled out the Deckard and started looking more closely at the cones. There were tiny numbers on four of them. We didn't know what they meant, but it seemed like we were supposed to find them. You getting this, Adam? I'll start working on that. Emily, you there? Then it was Emily's turn. Ready to roll. <laughs> she said later on it was like somebody had been taking notes during her nightmares. She's tough, but she just doesn't like creepy and spooky places. She had to put the Trinity in night vision mode just to see where she was going. She found a door, but then she saw something I don't think anyone else would have noticed. And she used a silicone-based spray to confirm it. A laser was aimed across the doorway as a kind of tripwire. It was the red line she was looking for. She used a tiny front surface mirror to trick the laser into thinking it was still beaming across the door. Once she got inside, she did a quick search of what seemed to be somebody's old office, but nothing really stood out. Then she realized... Okay, well, who leaves a fan running in an abandoned office? When she saw there was no off switch, she decided to use the Trinity to check out her hunch. Okay, wait. Let me see. Get in there. And there it was. Another four-digit number. And I still had no idea what to do with it. Finn's mission started out bad and got worse from there. Something wrong with your signal. We started to lose a signal. To but to make matters I'm worse, he was supposed to make this insane stair jump. Finn's board fell onto a lower platform after the jump, and he noticed there was a red line pointing at the door down there. He was about to step on the platform to check it out, and he decided to stick a minicam on the railing to give me another view. Good thing he did. Those minicams weigh, I don't know, maybe an ounce and a half? But I guess it was an ounce and a half too many. The whole platform gave out. He got back up to safety, but there was no way to get through that door now. I was stumped. But the next thing I know, he's hopping up and down like a jackrabbit. He was trying to tell me he'd found a hole in the wall big enough for the Orville's chopper. Luce pulled it out of his backpack, and I controlled it from here. The room was pretty big, and there were a lot of places to hide a four-digit number, if that's even what we were supposed to find. I kept thinking, how small could they be? Or how big? And I pulled way up in the corner and tilted the chopper down toward the floor. Sure enough, a gigantic four digit number. Nothing like a little perspective to show you something new. Luz suggested using a phone keypad layout to try turning the numbers into letters. I ran it through an app that usually does a good job at showing you the most likely letter combinations. Still looked totally random. Then Emily said to reverse the order of each group of four letters. And right when I did that, a video window popped up on everyone's screens. Good job, team. Very nice work. Yes, and that message was for all of you. Which message? 
This message. Welcome to ISD. I can still remember how pumped we were. We'd made it. We were working for ISD. But there would always be a part of me that wondered whether we could trust Laszlo. And in a lot of ways, Zara was even more of a mystery than before. We were in, and that was a good thing. But the question remained, what had we actually gotten ourselves into? <laughs>